let a marriage work. Well, Marilyn, who's kind of an insecure gal, remarries again. And some of you may have heard of this person. She married a playwright by the name of Arthur Miller in 1956. And if you guys are in drama and speech and debate, I'm guessing maybe you've heard of Arthur Miller. So she remarried again, this time to a playwright by the name of Arthur Miller, and, he, and married him in 1956. Well, again, careers, self-interest, selfishness, etc., led to another divorce, and those two were divorced in 1961. So by 1961, Marilyn Monroe has been married and divorced three times. And her life kind of <coughs> spiraled a little bit out of control after that, okay? Now, when you talk about the most famous performance ever given by Marilyn Monroe, that occurred on May 19, 1962. Her most famous performance occurred on May 19, 1962. And it was on that date that she was scheduled to sing Happy Birthday to President Kennedy at Madison Square Garden in New York City, where the President was going to be celebrating his 45th birthday. So the most famous event that you'll ever hear about, and I'll show it to you, was on May 19, 1962, when Marilyn Monroe was scheduled to sing Happy Birthday to President Kennedy at Madison Square Garden in New York City, for his 50, excuse me, 45th birthday. Now the guy that, who do you think set this up? We talked about him. Who, think about the Kennedy family. Who kind of set this thing up? No, he won't. Was it Kenneth Obama? No, he wouldn't have either. Who would be kind of a swinger at this time that was in the Kennedy family? Peter Lawford. Peter Lawford, the actor, his brother-in-law, set this thing up. Well, the guy that was the chairman of the events at Madison Square Garden, the guy that set up events there, was a guy by the name of Richard Adler. Here's Richard Adler right up there. Richard Adler. And he was the guy that scheduled events at Madison Square Garden, so he's going to be responsible for putting this birthday party together for the president. So Richard Adler, he was the chairman of events at Madison Square Garden, and he actually was the one that chose Marilyn Monroe to be the focal point and sing happy birthday to the president. Okay, so Richard Adler, chairman of the events at Madison Square Garden, actually was the man who chose that Marilyn Monroe would be the focal point and be the one singing happy birthday to the president. Now, we'll get back to Kenny O'Donnell, and we'll get back to... Bobby Kennedy, and we'll tell you that those two, along with many members of the Kennedy administration, were a little bit concerned when they heard that she was going to be the one, because rumors were out there that the President and Monroe were an item, and they did not want the publicity nightmare. So there was tremendous concern within the Kennedy administration, which did include Kenneth O'Donnell, which did include David Powers, which did include Robert Kennedy because of the rumors that Monroe and the president were an item. Now what made it even worse is Marilyn Monroe was scheduled to wear what was considered a very seductive nude designer gown. Okay, she was going to wear a very seductive nude designer gown. It was so tight on her that they actually sewed the dress onto her body prior to the performance. Okay, this is a picture of the dress. And this is the picture of the dress with her in it, in black and white. That dress in 1962 cost $12,000 to make. $12,000 to make this dress for this performance. On October 27, 1999, guess what that dress sold for? We want to take a guess? $1.3 million. So this was part of the problem too. This was the very seductive new designer gown that she was going to wear at the performance. It was so tight on her that it was sewn on, which tells you that what she didn't have what much underneath, so to speak. You know what I mean? And they didn't sew it over anything except for her. 
Well, early in the morning on May 19th, before the president's appearance, Adler considered canceling Monroe's appearance because he was thinking, oh, this might damage the image of the president. So the morning of the event on May 19th, Richard Adler's <coughs> second thoughts, thinking, you know, I think we better, we better call this thing off. This may really damage the image of the president. Well, what do you do when you're really tough on whether you should make a decision of? If I'm trying to make a decision on whether I should do something or not, and I'm not sure, what might I do? What? Get advice from you? From who, probably? Who would you get advice from? Somebody you could trust, a good friend? Well, that's what Adler did. So he called a comedian who was a very good friend of his, you might have heard of, by the name of Jack Benny. And he had a show kind of like Johnny Carson and that type of thing before Johnny Carson. So what Adler did, because he was having second thoughts about having Monroe appear, is he consulted an old friend by the name of Jack Benny. And he explained to Benny what the plan was, that Marilyn Monroe was going to come out in this dress and sing happy birthday in a very seductive voice to the president. And I'm going to read you Benny's answer to that question. Okay, here's what Benny said. He said, he said to Adler, Get somebody else. What kind of schmuck are you anyway? Getting Marilyn Monroe to sing happy birthday to the President of the United States. That's the advice he got from Jack Benny. Well, who did Adler decide he better call and get the final advice from? President Kennedy. So Adler calls the President to get his opinion on the matter. So Adler who gets blasted by his good friend Jack Benny, then calls the president to see what his thoughts are. And the president responded by saying, quote, Believe me, Dick, it'll be all right. Dick, short for Richard. Believe me, Dick, it'll be all right. So the president basically authorizes this deal, right? He said, Believe me, Dick, it'll be all right. Why would Kennedy want Monroe there? Not because he had something going with her, but what, what would it, her appearance at his birthday party? Pretty cool. What was pretty cool today? Tommy Smith calls? Pretty good deal. I feel pretty good about myself, man. I feel like I, this has really made me a better teacher to give you that opportunity. Well, he wants to portray what? Well, the more sw the swinginest White House we've ever had, man. I mean, he's a young president. He's got young aides. It's a young generation, and he's thinking, man, Marilyn Monroe coming? will really be looked at as pretty darn cool, the most swinging White House ever compared to old Eisenhower and Truman, okay? Well, who would you might be concerned about at this point? Mrs. Kennedy, okay? So what is Mrs. Kennedy's reaction to this, okay? Now, this is a great book. If you have, We're going to read a passage from it. Maryland, The Last Take, very good book, written by Peter Brown, Patty Barnum. And according to this book, rather than banish Monroe from the ceremony, JFK sacrificed the First Lady. Okay? Because basically these people are saying that she gave an ultimatum to her husband. If Monroe appeared at the President's birthday party, she would not. And told him to make a choice. Okay? Well, when the president made his choice, the first lady quietly excused herself from the ceremony. True story. So, in the center stage of Madison Square Garden, 20,000 Democrats stand and watch Peter Lawford deliver a drawn-out introduction of Marilyn Monroe as she moved into the center spotlight. Would you like to see it? Yeah. I'll show it. So, the man that will introduce Marilyn Monroe to sing happy birthday to the president will be his brother-in-law, Peter Lawford. And I'll show you how it occurred. If all of our technology works.
Lights, Mary, please. And here we go. A little ad here for a minute. No other scents feel like Glade. Melt your mood with our Hawaiian breeze fragrance. Feel relaxed. Feel Glade. Mr. President, on this occasion of your birthday, this lovely lady is not only Opportunity, the punctual. Mr. President, Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> A woman about whom <laughs> it truly may be said she needs no introduction. But let me just say, here she is. This but was, I'll this was not anyway. staged, by the way. Because in the history of show business, Pat says, in no one female who meant so much, who has done more, who meant... Okay. Anyway, there you go. You think she might have been on a few barbiturates or antidepressants or something? Well, we're going to talk about that at the end of the day. Obviously, that was a very famous performance, good or bad. Well, on August 5th of 1962, which was a Saturday, August 5th of 1962, it was a Saturday night, Marilyn Monroe was invited 
to a party that was being thrown by Peter Lawford. On Saturday, August 5th, 1962, Marilyn Monroe was invited to a party that was being thrown by Peter Lawford. She never showed for the party, which created great concern because she wasn't the type to miss one. Okay, so she doesn't show up for the party that Peter Lawford's throwing on that night. Well, after not seeing her for a period of time, it was investigated. She was found at her home, dead of an apparent drug overdose at the age of 36. So, when she didn't show up for that party at P Peter Lawford's, they found her at her home, dead of a drug overdose at the age of 36. Now, you'll see conspiracy theories all over the place about foul play and Marilyn's death as well. The Kennedys were trying to shut her up because she was unstable and going to blow the whistle on the president and her involvement. She also has supposedly had a crush on Bobby Kennedy and wanted him to leave Ethel and the nine children to be with her. And there's some, there's some rumors if you do some research. Anyway, that's what happened. I want to go back and read out of this book about what we just saw and the president's reaction. Now, some of this is a little bit above PG, so bear with me. He watched the actress move deliberately into the light, cutting short Lawford's sappy monologue. Just as Lawford said, Mr. President, never in the history of the world has one minute, woman meant so much. A gasp that built into a roar greeted Monroe as she danced through the circles of light. She coyly clasped the wrap around her, masking the dress beneath. She paused until the roar quieted, then shrugged out of the fur, letting it fall backward into Lawford's hands. Whistles and shrieks followed. Up in the presidential box, John Kennedy looked over his shoulder at writer Gene Shores and said, Jesus Christ, look at that dress. Shore noticed that the president was staring at every part of the woman. This is, he said, what an ass, Gene, what an ass. <laughs> Seated next to him, Bobby betrayed no trace of emotion. <coughs> Just behind the president in the director's control group, Richard Adler took a long look at the transparent dress. It was everything I feared, he said. Just before showtime, he had received a last-minute flurry of calls protesting Monroe's appearance. Some came from cabinet members, one from a senior member of the President's White House staff, and some from the highest levels of the Pentagon. As she began her first husky chorus, Monroe seemed energized, perhaps from the hexadrine prescribed by studio doctors. Robert Slatzer remembered that she was also pumped up with megavitamins vitamins and antibiotics. The effect was just hair-raising. It was so beautiful, said Robert, Ralph Roberts, who saw the performance from the VIP box. You couldn't hear yourself think for the screaming and yelling. It was like a mass seduction, Adler later recalled, with Marilyn whispering happy birthday and the crowd yelling and screaming for her. I realized then that the president was a better showman than I was. Monroe later told Life magazine that the approval of the crowd was like an embrace. Then I thought, by God, I'll sing this song if it's the last thing I ever do. And I did it for the people as well. I remember when I turned to the microphone, I looked all the way up into the stands and thought, that's where I'd be, way up under those rafters. The dress and the occasion would etch themselves into the history of the Kennedy years, along with other film flashes of Camelot, JFK hatless at his inauguration, Jacqueline Kennedy arriving in Paris, John John's salute to his father's coffin, Monroe's performance has been plain ever since. There you go. All right, that's the story on Marilyn Monroe. Today is Thursday. We will have a 50-point quiz on Marilyn Monroe only on Monday. Okay? I don't like giving Monday tests, but this is a quiz. I'll give you a little time to study. We'll have a 50-point quiz on Marilyn Monroe Monday, and your biographies you do Monday by 3.30, correct? Okay, tomorrow, if you're here, we will watch some video I want to got a couple videos I want to show you that are not really historically orientated. Thanks for being a great bunch today with Tommy Smith. I hope you enjoyed that. Okay, have a good day. We'll see you down the road.